night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on BNN. We've been talking about the dangers and costs of cyber crimes. Uh, governments, corporations, of course, are in the target here. We've been running a special series on cyber weapons, but today we're going to bring these threats closer to home. We're going to take a look at identity theft. It's a pretty worrying picture. Look at that. Canadians lost $10 million last year. One in six Canadians a victim. 10 million Americans falling victim in 2009. And look at that, 48 billion in ID theft in the States in 2009. For more on identity theft, we're joined by Robert Siciliano. He's a McAfee consultant and identity theft expert in Boston. Hi there, Robert. Hello. You think this is a huge problem for the public? Um, give us an idea of the scale. Well, like you said, uh, you know, it's approaching a $50 billion issue here in the States. Um, it's really, you know, worldwide uh, at this point over the past five years. Uh, some estimates make it at about a trillion dollars in losses to businesses and consumers and government agencies. It's, uh, it's a huge problem, unfortunately, one that's going to get worse before it gets any better. Now, you've got some terms for us, SSN and SIM. Just remind us what they are and why they're contributing to the problem. So certainly the social security number, uh, SSN, and social insurance number, SIN, are our primary identifiers, at least here in the northern part of North America. And because we have these nine digits as our primary identifier, uh, government issued, and they are used by credit bureaus, by banks, uh, creditors, uh, you know, credit card companies, even uh, video places, uh, mobile phone companies, utilities, just about any, any lender of any kind, any creditor uses the social insurance number or the social security number. And because that's our primary identifier and it's available in so many places, uh, it makes for new account fraud such a problem that the bad guy just gets your SIN or SSN and they go ahead and open up these new accounts under your name. Robert, uh, I must admit, I don't want to sound like a Luddite, but I, I've never really taken this very ser seriously in a personal context. I mean, if you have your bank card spiffed at the RABA, you know, the bank gives you your money back if you th take a thousand bucks out of your account. But, you know, why, you know, what risk do people take personally, uh, either financially, uh, reputation I get, but what's the personal financial risk that uh, consumers and business people take in this area? Because I don't quite get it, to Certainly. be honest. Okay, so you spoke of a new account fraud. If money's taken out of your bank account, then the uh, bank will go ahead and replenish that money. Generally, that's uh, termed as a zero liability policy. However, not all banks will refund your money in the event that you are hacked or that uh, money's taken out of your account. For example, I've, uh, I, I'm contacted all the time by people who are a victim of uh, ATM skimming. And ATM skimming, of course, is when bad guys put devices in the face of the ATM, they punch in your PIN code, or they, they, they skim the information off the back of your magnetic card, they get the information off your, of your PIN code via a wireless camera, and then they create a clone card hours later and they, they take all the money out of your account by punching in your PIN and using that clone card. Often, victims of that crime will not get their money back because the bank doesn't want to believe them. They don't want to believe that they, in fact, were skimmed in that way. And so the bank doesn't always reset the clock. Um, th if the victim's credit card, say, is compromised, and they don't refute those charges within a, within a specified period of time, generally it's 60 days, the bank will put the money back in their account if they don't refute those charges. Again, uh, not all account takeover does the money go actually go back in the account for a number of different reasons. So that, in and of itself, is costly costing consumers billions of dollars every year. I have That's heard of, just... Um, yeah, I was going to say, I, I have heard of one story where, in Canada recently, a fellow um, uh, found out someone bought a car with his uh, credit card <laughs> that had a pin, one of those chip a pin ID things, and um, the bank didn't believe that he actually hadn't inserted his own pin with the, with the chip card, and uh, there was a big tussle about that. And, you know, now that we're all being pushed these pin IDs, um, and yet, it's so easy, of course, to, to frankly, uh, as you said yourself, um, rip that off somehow. I mean, is the industry pushing the liability onto the consumer for the first time, really, since credit cards have been issued for, what, two generations now? 
Well, you have uh, EMV, which is Euro MasterCard Visa, rolling out in Canada, whereas we don't have that in the States, which is one of the reasons why uh, ATM skimming and point-of-sale skimming is such a huge problem here. And the banks generally, uh, banks, creditors in general, do not want to believe that you were scammed, that by default they think that you are a, a bad debtor. They think that you are irresponsible, first and foremost, and they come after you for those funds, whether it's new account fraud or account takeover. Uh, so pushing the responsibility responsibility towards the consumer, that is by default, and it always has been that way. Uh, you have to jump over hurdles and beg and plead and fill out all kinds of documentation to prove that it in fact wasn't you. Identity theft is the only crime that I can think of that you are guilty until proven innocent. Hmm. Uh, and then, and then there's uh, new account fraud. And new account fraud is when they take that SIN or SSN, like I, be I said at the beginning, and they open up these new accounts under your name. They get new credit cards, new loans, and so forth. And when that happens to you, you're, and the bad guy doesn't pay the bill, because they generally don't pay the bill, then you go to apply for a loan to buy a house, to buy a car, and your credit's bad. And so the creditor looks at your, your credit, and they go, well, you're not getting this home because you have bad credit, so you're, you're out of luck. And you go, well, I pay all my bills. And you look at your credit report and it says that you have this credit card that is outstanding for the past year and now your credit scores went from the eights to now to the fives that's bad for a consumer so identity theft does affect you for new account fraud and for account takeover in a number of different ways it can take anywhere from an hour to 600 hours or more it can cost anything from nothing to twenty thirty thousand dollars in legal fees and lawyers and some people even go to jail for the crimes of, of an identity thief Unbelievable. What a nightmare. And let's hope you and us and our viewers don't get trapped in this uh, anytime soon. Robert, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Robert Siciliano, uh, he is a McAfee consultant, an identity theft expert in Boston. Yeah, what a horror show. You know, tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees to try to get, uh, try to establish you're not the person who did all this spending. No, it's the person who actually pretends. It used to be you'd pay your dead person and go and take out loans sure. and get a driver's license and a SIN number. Now it's clearly, you know, grabbing Andrew's uh, ID and, and going around and buying a house or a car or getting a mortgage on that basis. It, um, you know, the industry needs to figure this out, clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as we move towards NFC catalyzed commerce using cell phones, smartphones, right. which is around the corner in 12, and it'll be probably blossoming in 13, that clearly can impact uh, uh, cybercrime, I would think, even more. I guess the one hope, and we're going to be looking at a phone in a second that recognizes your face, it may be biometric, you know, your face or... But now you're waving your credit card, right? You want to pay 20 bucks, you can actually wave your credit card. There's no, there's no pin, there's no it's signature, amazing. it's just, you know, you're walking by. It's fascinating. It's truly amazing. Okay, we got to take a break. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at what may be in store for Research in Motion when it re reports its Q3 results in less than an hour from now.